Well, we're going to do this again. This time, we're going to look at how I mix a track. So, given a track, how do I take it from a completed track to something that's been perfectly balanced, or at least as close as I can get to perfect? Let's find out. So, the first step is to set up on my controller the fades. All right? So I have that BFC fader controller unit. So I set up each of the tracks here to map to a particular fader. Now, because I only have eight faders, I have to double up. So I mark them with the gray area. The next step is setting up a reasonable loop point. And I'm going to loop this section of music that has the most going on. I'm gonna set my balances from there. And I start with everything zeroed out. So there's no output on any of the channels. And then I move to the most important instruments. The drums, the bass, and the breaks. And you can see them all there. And then I start adding parts. Here you can see I'm messing with the EQ of this particular part to make it sit with the track better. Mostly that involves shaping the lower end because you want to remove a lot of the low end of most of your tracks. Here you can see I'm chopping off again most of the low end here because this particular drum track doesn't need any low end. Okay, so here I'm selecting the five tracks that I set the volumes on, and I'm lowering the volume. And that gives me a lot more headroom to play with, which is super important. Now at this point, I'm using the pink noise mixing process. So frequently you'll see me bouncing back to the spectrum analyzer and see it shift suddenly to a nice gradient down and then to a whole bunch of bounces. Like right here. And this is me using that pink noise mixing technique to reset my ears a little bit. So as I'm adding up these tracks, I'm determining how close they are to the gradient of pink noise as well, which is a mixing technique I've kind of picked up from the internet, which is also useful. You don't want it to match exactly because music shouldn't be like pink noise. Music should not sound like pink noise at all. But it gives you a general idea of the balance of your frequency spectrum. Again, here you can see me shaping out the low end of this particular synth. Like the low end doesn't have to be cut completely. But for the most part, you should be cutting the low end out of most of your tracks. A little bit of a pink noise reset for my brain again. Now that I've got all the tracks mixed in, I'm working on the balance between the bass and the kick and the snare, and just getting the balance is just right. And I think that's important. You start with the bass and the kicks, and then you mix everything else, and then you go back. Now here, I've moved my loop to the giant breakdown and to the big burst towards the end of the track. And again, I'm just checking the volumes. The I'm checking to make sure on, it's balanced more, nicely. Is the fact that we really like you'd want to make sure that at the breakdown there is a reduction in volume, but not too much. And you want to make sure there is a different sound for that breakdown. But again, you want to have the track cohesive. And you can even see it in the spectrum analyzer here. Okay, again, I'm moving back to the major section of the track and just verifying that the changes I made still sound good. That's important. Always check your work. Always go back and check your work against other places and make sure that you're not changing things too much. Okay, here's my first crack at 
removing some of the resonances on this track. Now that I have it nicely mixed, there's still some pieces of the track, some frequencies that really jump out and squeal. And so I've got this little mastering rack to help me deal with that. At this point, I'm shaping the overall track. I'm shaping the EQ. I'm just like giving it a little bit of a boost in where it needs, cutting where it not needs to not be so loud. This is more of a general shaping, whereas the last EQ section was more surgical, more of micro shaping. Like here you can see, I'm gonna start to boost the top end just a little bit. Again, just to get that nice flat EQ. There, you can really see the difference between the pink noise on and off there. Just a little more shaping to make it nice and smooth. Now, I cannot overstate this enough. Bunnies are awesome. But I also cannot overstate that you need to give your ears a break. That is so important when you're mixing. Ideally, you should give your ears like a day's worth of a break. For this particular track, I didn't do that. I'm not always the best person at giving myself a day. But at least give yourself 20 minutes, half an hour, the longer the better. All right, finally the mixing is done. Now we're gonna do the air quotes mastering. And this is really just applying a gentle compressor and then a limiter and then a clipper and then another clipper all in sequence. And you, you can get away with some pretty decent clipping. The important thing is to make sure that that little needle on the right isn't bouncing around like it is now. It should not do that. The needle at the very right there, the digital clipper, should just barely waver. It shouldn't be going quite so nuts as it is. But then the important thing is just to compare it with a dry version of your track. Like, Turn it on and turn it off. And you can see there in the 23 mastering rack at the bottom how I've got the A slash B and I can just move that back and forth and figure out how does it sound dry and how does it sound wet. And then finally, is just to give it a listen through. Start in the very beginning and then go to the very end. This is really important because as you'll see coming up, I have to mess around with one of the tracks, the powder blue track, the second one in the middle there because it's a major melody, but it doesn't come through in the mix. So I have to mess around a little bit and make sure that that sound does come through in the mix a little better. That mostly involves a little bit of compression, maybe some saturation, and even just bumping up the volume. And at some point I figured out the cause of most of my resonances. So I turned down the resonances on that track. Just again, to, to make it sound less hollow in those frequencies. And a few more adjustments just to make it a little tighter. 
verify the stereo spread. And when I'm satisfied, well, then I make sure the endpoint is where I want it. And I can call the track complete. Until next time, mixing is fun.